Before we deep dive into this, why don't you hit that like button? It really helps us show out. You can also become a subscriber if that's more your speed. So kernel 5.16 has hit release candidate and Proton is making great strides. Let's talk about this. In one of my recent videos, I went over whether it's a fair fight to compare the Steam Deck to the Nintendo Switch. One of the caveats that I talked about for the Steam Deck is the fact that some games might not work on it, unlike the Switch, where most games are built from the ground up for that device. However, things are already looking really good for the Steam Deck because, as I'll get into it in this video, a new Linux kernel release will allow better performance for games to run through Proton, and a new Proton release allows for even greater compatibility. So kernel 5.16-RC1 was released yesterday as of recording this video. This kernel will likely not become stable until the end of December or maybe even early next year, but it will come with a lot of goodies, especially goodies for the Steam Deck and even Linux gamers in general. For one, there's now stable support for Intel's 12th generation Alder Lake S graphics. There's also initial bring up for the DG2 and Alchemist graphics cards. Great news for anyone who already has the latest Intel hardware, provided they're able to even get it at this point. The Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 now has support along with other ARM-based processors, including Snapdragon 690, the Rockchip RK3566, and RK3688. The Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons and the Pro Controller have official support now based on uh, reverse engineered drivers. And the Switch Pro Controller can be used both wirelessly via Bluetooth and through USB. LED support, rumble, and other features also work with both controllers. Sony published their official driver for the DualSense controller around Christmas last year. It has since been incorporated in the Linux kernel since 5.12. With kernel 5.16, there are now LED handling improvements, thus having even better support for the controller on Linux. Kernel 5.16 includes a screen quirk for the Steam Deck. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> the device needs LCD 800 by 1280 right side up so as to give the screen its correct orientation due to the odd 1280 by 800 resolution. What's probably the best feature of 5.16 though is Futex 2's Sys Futex Wait V system call. This system call allows waiting on multiple Futexes, thus more closely matching Windows wait for multiple objects functionality. This will enable better performance for games running through Wine or Proton. Even some native Linux games may make use of the system call, so there are benefits for native games as well. And Pharonix mentions that the increase in performance may even be somewhere around a few percentage points. Now that the Steam Deck has been delayed by two months, this gives Valve plenty of time to incorporate the new kernel into the handheld as a stable release, giving players an even better out-of-box experience. So Proton 3.6-8 is available as a release candidate as well. Last Friday, Valve debuted Proton 6.3-8 as a release candidate. In this new release, there's a massive list of games that are now playable. Games like Deathloop, Disgaea, Age of Empires 4, Nickelodeon's All-Star Brawl, and the single-player campaign for Call of Duty Black Ops 2 should now all work. Additionally, games that now work with BattleEye include Ark, Survival Evolved, and Mountain Blade 2, Bannerlord. As we talked about before, other developers who are interested in making their BattleEye games compatible with Proton should reach out to their BattleEye support team. DX11 and DX12 games that support NVIDIA's DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling, which works similar to AMD's FSR feature, can be used by adding Proton underscore enable underscore NVAPI equals one as a Steam launch parameter and changing the value of DXGI.NVAPI hack to false rather than true in DXVK.conf. DLSS allows the player to enjoy higher frame rates by lowering the in-game resolution while still keeping textures of high quality. The catch here is is that the player obviously needs to own an RTX graphics card, as GTX cards don't support DLSS. Several bugs were squashed in a handful of games. For example, Project Cars 3 still accepts inputs after alt tabbing. Video freezing has been fixed with Deep Rock Galactic, thus preventing the game from crashing, and starting Bulger's Gate 3 should no longer crash either. Besides all of these improvements, DXVK, VKD3D Proton, and Wine Mono have all been updated with this release as well. The former two have been updated to the latest commit, while Wine Mono has updated to 6.4.1. Proton 3.6-8RC will likely become stable within the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, if you want to try it out for yourself, find Proton 6.3 in Steam, right-click it, select Properties, go to the Betas tab, and then select Proton 3.6-8-RC in the drop-down menu. If you find any issues with this release, be sure to let Valve know in the GitHub thread. 
Good times are ahead of us, my friends, with new features coming to kernel 5.16 for better Proton performance and more games becoming playable with Proton 6.3-8. Uh, the future of the Steam Deck and Linux gaming in general is looking brighter and brighter. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I want to give a special shout out to my patrons uh, and my YouTube members, without whom I wouldn't be able to do this. If you believe in the work that I'm doing here and you want to help support this show and help it continue to grow, head down in the description, you'll find a link to becoming a YouTube member as well as becoming a patron. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, hit that like button, it really helps the show out. You can also hit that subscribe button to become a subscriber and see all the latest cool stuff we're doing here on the channel. Uh, but that's going to do it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day and I'll see you next time.